I'm Joan Abel. Psalm 77:14 tells us that our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is the God of wonders and miracles. Okay. Watch Healing Miracles every Thursday evening here on WHT at 12 midnight Eastern Time, 11 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Pacific. Hear healing testimonies that will bless you, help you, and give you hope. You're watching WHT, World Harvest Television. we're going to talk about weather. Have you ever wondered, I'm sure you have, why all these weather disturbances are taking place, especially in the United States? Could there be a connection between what's happening in Israel and the weather disturbances? Well, we know that God loves Israel. We know that God is very upset with what the countries and the nations are doing with Israel. They're coming against Israel. And, of course, the Bible tells us that those in the end times that's going to happen, and we are in the end times. But it also tells us that God in his displeasure will create uh, torment in, on the earth and in the skies. And there's so much of that happening. So we're going to ask Jerry, because he's done a lot of research on this subject as well, uh, Jerry does a lot of homework. When he comes on the program, he knows what he's talking about. And he's going to tell us what he has found out from all these weather disturbances and the connection. So let's welcome Jerry again to Healing Miracles. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Joe. Thanks for returning. Okay. So today we're going to talk about the weather. And uh, you were on the program about a year ago, and we talked a little bit about it, well, quite a bit about it, and how Israel is the apple of God's eye, and he gave the land to the Israelites. He gave the land to the Jews, and people are always trying to steal their land and divide it and chop it up, and it's, very, it's a very small country to begin with, and then we have all these huge nations around it that have all kinds of land in comparison, but yet they always zero in on poor little Israel. Uh, why is that, Jerry? Well, I, I believe uh, that, uh, that Satan is wanting to uh, diminish the nation of, nation of Israel in order uh, to, uh, to stop God's progress on this earth. If he can get rid of the Jewish people, then he will believe uh, that uh, he's won. But if you just go throughout the Bible, start with the book of Genesis and go all the way through there, you can see a pattern of, of how you know, he has tried to uh, stop the progress of, of God uh, from the beginning all the way up into our current uh, times that we live in there. And so uh, uh, the Jewish folks brought us the Messiah. The salvation comes from uh, the, the Jewish line. And, you know, Jesus was Jewish. We need to remember Amen. that. These 12 apostles, guess what? A Jewish background and, and, and so forth there. So, so we have Jewish roots. Let me mention something right here. A lot of people don't think about this, but you know, um, the Orthodox Jews do not read the New Testament or accept it. Correct. But you know, it was written by Jews. Yes, it was. It's sort of ironic, isn't it? Yes, and that's something, if you're, if you're talking to, to those folks there, you know, bring that up. As I've talked to many folks who, uh, from a Jewish background, and, and God, through the uh, radio ministry, has, has allowed me to talk to a lot of folks, you know, and uh, from a Jewish background who accepted Messiah. And, and they see him in the New Testament, and it's just amazing how their eyes are opened, and they're just on fire uh, for uh, the Lord once they see that veil is lifted, as the Scripture tells us, and they're able to see Messiah in the Scriptures. Isn't that exciting? Where did they usually see it? What, what Scripture would you refer them to? Uh, Isaiah scripture? 53, mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, their, in, their, in their writings. 
Okay, in mm -hmm. the in the Old Testament, go to Isaiah 53 there, and and many will uh, when they're reading Isaiah 53 begin to think, well, that's speaking of the Christian Jesus mm -hmm. that that we have, and, and they'll begin to see that. And I had one testimony of a friend of mine. Uh, and he was talking about that's how he came. He was a Jewish per person and was through Isaiah 53 when he, when he was in the Navy that he found his Messiah there. And, and then he started reading in, in the Gospel of John. And it was just amazing how he was able to uh, come to the uh, real, realization that, uh, he, uh, that uh, Jesus Christ was the true Messiah. Now, interesting enough, sometimes in some synagogues, they will not allow Isaiah 53 to be read. Mm -hmm. Very interesting uh, to, to think uh, about this chapter there. But this just gets us back to the, uh, the, the factor that God loves his people there. He loves his land. Amen. And, and we need to remember, and it, it says in his word here, that he loves his land. And uh, you don't mess with God's land. That's right. When Let me read Isaiah 53. For I know that most people watching the program know what it says, but there's always a few out there that don't. So Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it says, Surely, now talking about Jesus Christ, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him smitten. I'm sorry, stricken. Smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was, he was bruised for our iniquities. That chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. And that is talking about Jesus Christ on the cross. And when Jesus Christ went to the cross 2,000 years ago, he took all our sins, all our sorrows, he took all our disease, he took everything that's not good everything that the devil tries to put on us Jesus Christ took to the cross on his back 2,000 years ago and he was lashed and whipped and bled and you know it was horrible I, I can't even bear to see uh, during uh, resurrection day Easter to see Jesus on the cross I still can it just brings such tears to my eyes because uh, he took uh, such a beating for us and then Every stripe on his back represented sin and disease. And it was nailed to the cross, Jerry, once and for all. And that's why we can claim our forgiveness through that. It, Jesus made the full atonement for us. We didn't do anything but wrong. I mean, we're all sinners, and there's nobody out there that's really a good guy. You that's know what right. I mean? We, we try, and yes, we... we follow the rules the best we can but we all make mistakes but praise God we can ask for forgiveness and through the shed blood of Jesus Christ we are forgiven time after time and uh, the Bible says how many times and it says seven times seventy which means we keep get, we are not only are forgiven but we need to forgive others by the same means so we praise God for this scripture Isaiah 53 4 and 5 and we thank you Lord for that we can't thank him enough for what he did for us yes yeah, some folks believe that uh, have said that Isaiah is the fifth gospel mm. uh, of the Old Testament there uh, because it contains uh, just everything that you you need to know there I, I love the prophet Isaiah in fact I named one of my children after uh, Isaiah after the prophet here because it's one of my favorite books to study I really enjoy getting into uh, the prophet Isaiah. He covers just about everything uh, that uh, needs to be covered there, and even the it's weather. A good book. You know that that we're we're talking about here. Uh, one of my favorite chapters about the weather from the prophet Isaiah, established you know as a good Jewish prophet here, is Isaiah 29, and he, he, these words uh, says uh, in Isaiah 29, uh, verse uh, chapter uh, verse six. You will be punished by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake and a great noise, with storm and tempest and flame of devouring fire. Interesting the punishments there, you know, and, and, and God has reasons for these punishments, and we'll talk about those in a moment there. But we mentioned uh, thunder has to do with rain, yes. right? And you have earthquakes, we know what those are. Great noise happening in the skies, that's kind of interesting. 
storms and tempests. We've been having a lot of those there and flames of devouring fire. Now, that's the punishments devouring. there. Devouring. Devouring fire, yes. They're going to just really burn up acres and acres. And we have that happening in the United States. We've had a lot of forest fires, haven't yes. we? Yes. But here's the reason that Isaiah says, why are you going to have all these natural disasters happening? And Isaiah the prophet says, the multitude of all nations who fight against Ariel or Jerusalem, uh, even all who fight against... That's ag another name for Jerusalem. That's, uh, Ariel mm -hmm. is another name for Jerusalem. Even all who fight against her and her fortress and distress her it shall be as a dream of a night vision. So the prophet Isaiah is saying, if, if, if you're going to come against the city of Jerusalem, then uh, you've got some, uh, you're going to have some things to put up with. Flames, fires, floods, earthquakes, you know, all kinds of interesting things are going to happen when you uh, distress uh, the uh, nation of Israel. And then another place that's interesting to go to about this, I was just studying this, is the book of Job. And, and that's an interesting, uh, uh, to, you think, well, what can we find in the book of Job about this? Because I know some folks out there will, will, will be thinking, well, uh, does God send these punishments? Or are these punishments by God, the weather? And, and the weather is one of those things that we as Christians sometimes will scoff at the most. We'll, we'll be thinking, well, does God really use weather in our times there? But what did the prophet Isaiah say? He said, if you mess with Jerusalem, if you come against her, distress her in some ways, then these punishments are going to, to, to be happening here. And, and what's and happening with Jerusalem right now? What, what's going on, Jerry? Well, uh, the, uh, the presidents of many countries are distressing Jerusalem in, in America. Uh, our own president is, is asking to go back to the 1967 borders. And then other, uh, the president of Chile, for example, is, is, is pressuring you know, for, for the Palestinians to have a state. Uh, the, the Japanese people are pressuring uh, for uh, uh, the same uh, thing to happen. And interesting enough, these are two countries that have had tremendous weather yes, problems. Yes, they, they've had tremendous what weather problems. Earthquakes there. that... Yeah are off the charts. Yes, but why is God sending these here? And there's some answers, I believe, in, in the uh, uh, Isaiah, or Job here, chapter 37. Let me read some of this here. I'm in Isaiah 37, uh, uh, verse 10. says, by the, now, here, here, here's the word of God there. Now, listen to what's happening here. The, by the breath of God, ice is given, and, he, and the broad waters are frozen. Also, with moisture, he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters the bright clouds. So, so Job here is saying, who's in control of the weather? God. God is in control of the weather here. They swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them to do on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, that is God, whether for correction or for his land or for his mercy. Now, there's correction here for three things there. Did you catch them? Whether it's going to be for correction, whether it's going to be for his land, or for mercy. So sometimes these weather events will be for God's mercy, for folks to know the mercy of God, to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And after these disasters, think of how many folks you know, have, have made a profession, have come to know the Lord. Christians have went in and helped these people and showed the love of Christ. Many of those folks for the first time in these uh, countries that have disasters are seeing Christ through the aid and through the food that is brought in and the clothing. And they see Christ made alive in their lives. Isn't that amazing to think so, about So that. God is using that. Yes, and for his land. Right here mm -hmm. in, in, the jo in the book of Job there, he talks about these weather events. Because he's talking about weather here uh, is going to come for his land. So God has a, re, you know, if you mess with his land there, we, here we have, and Job is the oldest book of the Bible. By yes, it is. Yes, it's considered mm -hmm. the oldest book of the Bible here. And so here he's talking about these uh, natural disasters. And then in chapter 38, he continues another uh, interesting verse. This is God speaking again. He's going to reveal that he is the one that controls all these things there. And uh, the uh, verse 22 of Job 38 says, Have you entered the treasury of snow? Or have you seen the treasury of hell? 
which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. Now this, I believe, is talking about the coming tribulation. Mm -hmm. Now God's saying that he has these hailstones, because when we look in the book of Revelation, it's, uh, John talks about how he sees the hailstones falling upon the people because they're doing what? Blaspheming God. And, and they're making fun of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and it's interesting to think about that the, the, in the Old Testament, the uh, penalty for blaspheming God was stoning. What a connection. What a connection. But that just shows that God's word, he sticks to his word, doesn't he? He, he sure sticks does. to his word. Um, I think also that I can only speak for the, about the United States and what I, what I hear, what I see, and come to certain conclusions. I, I know other countries have been having revivals. Um, the United States has not really had one. I do know that many years ago uh, there was a um, different movement toward that, but it never really blossomed, uh, came full blown. So for years different churches have been declaring uh, a revival. We're going to have a nationwide revival and this revival is going to of course bring a lot of people into the kingdom. But I myself have not seen that. And I think that these weather disturbances, yes, they are definitely connected with Israel. But also, there may be a double reason for this. And that could be that the people will turn to the Lord because they're not turning to the Lord the way he would like them to without his... Um, strong hand pushing and doing the things he's doing. Um, there's a lot of people that have been hurt through the tornadoes and the floods, lost all kinds of valuable items, uh, material things. Some have insurance, many do not. So this is a chance for people to turn to the Lord. It's like when someone's ready to die and hopefully they'll reach out if they don't know the Lord and say something, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me my sins, whatever. Right. Um, and, and accept Jesus Christ into their life, even though it's the last moment. And now we've got people that are going into this terrible time of destruction of, you know, a lot of times God can only speak to people through their wallet. Right. And so they start losing material things and hopefully Many of them, through these disasters, have turned to the Lord. I don't know. I don't. I don't go out with, uh, you know, a camera out of the studio here and ask people. But I'm sure that has that has happened. What do you think about that, Jerry? Yes, I believe so. I, I believe that that's that, that's as, as Job talks about here. You know, the storms. You know, can, mm -hmm. can these 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 can be for correction and for mercy. Right. You know, God is extending His mercy through. Uh, these storms, and then, then we Christians, you know, are, are called to, to be the ones to go in and help, and they see Christ through us and in us, and, and, and I'm just, uh, I really think when we get to heaven, we'll see, uh, you know, the, the, the multitude of souls, you mm -hmm. know, because they saw Christ in us in these times of distress, mm -hmm. when we come together, and, and as a Christian nation, we're always the one going to the aid of the other countries, too. We, we help them when, when they have these uh, natural disasters, and everything, but we need to uh, realize that God's word is true, and that when He uh, when He talks about His the apple of His eye, you know uh, the nation of Israel there, uh, we're not to distress her. And when we do, uh, you know, on record we can we can really see uh, that many countries, you know, when they do distress her, things happen. It, the it's not a coincidence that you know you can uh, have some things here. Would you like me to share some of those? Uh, oh yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, for example, uh, the tsunami and, and, and Japan that we all know about here, I have a, um, uh, this is dated uh, uh, March the 9th there, and this is talking about a, um, a ceremony be between Japan and the United Nations uh, to help uh, the people of the Palestinian bank. 
and it talks about a handover ceremony today between Japan and the United Nations World Food Program marks Japan's continued commitment to provide food assistance to the uh, poor in the Palestinian occupied Palestinian territory. Uh, Japan's uh, contribution is uh, 3.1 uh, million dollars there. Uh, over uh, 3,000 metric tons of food is, is given to this, but this is to the Palestinian people, the sworn enemy of God's people. Now, so, the, so we're talking about the people in the, um, the land of Palestine? Yes, the, 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 these are the Palestinians mm -hmm. uh, who, who are over there who are wanting to, the state. You know, okay, to, uh, let's just stop here for a moment and, and tell us, Jerry, how that land became named Palestine. Well, the, it, the land was named Palestine as, as a way to uh, make fun of the Jewish people there. How because far back does that go? This goes back to ancient times there. The Palestinians uh, were, uh, that was a derogatory name uh, for the Jewish people there because the Philistines were their sworn enemy there. And so when you go back to the Roman times, I can't remember exactly which emperor it was, but they changed the name to Palestine. What was it before that, the name? Uh, Israel. Israel, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Israel. That's what people need to understand. Yeah, people need to understand that, that it was named it, it was named Israel there. So it was Israel before it was Palestine. Yeah, and the Palestinian yeah, there's, mm -hmm. there's this this has happened to I think it was Hadrian, if I mm -hmm. remember correctly, who, who who changed that name there to take away the Jewish influence. That it, it we're gonna, you know, and then we're gonna mock them at the same time but by changing uh, the name to Palestine. And so if, if you know your history there and if you talk to Jewish people there and you say Palestine, well, that's a very, uh, not, not a good thing to, to, to say there. So, mm -hmm. But when we support those folks who, who, you know, they want to wipe Israel off the map. That's right. And they have these huge countries all around them. Why don't they go home? <laughs> well, uh, they, that's the, the, you know, goes all the way back to the ancient times there. Uh, uh, it's spoken about in Genesis there. But mm -hmm. when these nations begin to support them, just as Japan has sent all this aid, and, and, and it, it says here uh, the J Japanese government is determined con uh, to continue in its support to the Palestinian people. And, and they're, they're, they want them to ha uh, uh, go back to the borders there, and, and we have this happening, and then there's this massive earthquake. Is that coincidence? But according to God's word, he doesn't want, uh, if you mess with the land or Jerusalem there, then you're going to have ha have these problems. And then Chile is another one, another country that folks aren't aware of, has the second largest Palestinian population outside the Middle East. Think of how many uh, earthquakes have happened uh, this year in Chile. In fact, they had one uh, on uh, March the 6th here, a 6.2, a large one in Chile there. And their president is also uh, wants to recognize Palestine or, or the Palestinian state, let me say it that way, uh, with the uh, right for those folks to live within their borders there. So, he, so when you begin to check some of the background, and it's, it's interesting, isn't it, how these countries who are supporting the Palestinians are having these massive, massive earthquakes. Okay, let's talk a little bit, we only have a few minutes left, about the number of tornadoes and the hailstorms. Um, just touch on some of that. Well, as, as if you think about this year, we've had uh, massive floods in Joplin. Think about that. We've had unusual uh, uh, weather, uh, tornadoes happening, the largest outbreak uh, since 1925 of tornadoes with the winds. We have the fires out in uh, Nevada and, and it's just Texas. Uh, Texas, yeah, mm -hmm. and burning massive uh, acres of land. We had tornadoes in New England and areas that normally don't That's have right. they don't this have them. kind of weather. Raleigh, North Raleigh, Carolina. Yes, yes. In, in our area, we had uh, golf ball sized hailstones. And they had that in Raleigh yes. also. And all this is happening mm -hmm. when our, uh, these countries begin to pressure Israel uh, to give up land. So, what do you think our future holds? I mean, if we continue with the um, government the way it is our government in the U.S. right now, pressuring Israel to give up more land and pressuring and pressuring and maybe they'll somehow take it upon themselves to divide the land. And I don't think that's right that somebody should force a country to do something they don't want to do. It's their country. 
Right. And what gives the outsider the right to do something like yeah, that? It, it doesn't. It doesn't because we're going to have, you know, uh, the Bible prophesies that once they get to Jerusalem that it's never going to go back. And so, but the 1967 borders would change all that. So we're going to have, uh, if we do not, uh, uh, you know, uh, stop doing what we're stop doing, doing what we're mm-hmm. doing, and support. We need to support so Israel. Support is well. Mm-hmm. I believe we're still going to have this. Uh, well, in the next half of the year, we'll have uh, more of this uh, severe weather happening. Mm-hmm. And that big earthquake that they're predicting hasn't happened yet. So, uh, fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> yes, but uh, just keep watching the news. One eye on the news and one eye on the Bible. And, and, and see uh, if, if you see the pattern here Amen. between uh, the, the earthquakes and what we've said here in the Word of God. Jerry, we're out of time. God bless you. Thank you for that information. And we hope that you will pray that God's mercy and compassion will be with us in the United States if the government continues to follow through with what they're planning on doing, and that is to divide Israel and to go back to the borders of 1967, which means that Israel, one part of Israel will only be, I think it's nine miles wide. Yes, that's correct. It's it's a very tiny nation to begin with. But thank you for watching, and God bless you, and we'll see you next week.